From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, tinea, basically known as cutaneous dermatophytes. Tinea is uh, a very, very common infection. And many times, actually, the patient himself says that he has a jock itch, a great spot. And uh, so let us see the most important points in dermatophytosis. They are basically a group of uh, fungi that infect the skin. And almost everybody carries this fungus. And they survive on the dead keratin. We have this keratin on the epidermis. And that is where these organisms live. And in immunocompetent persons, they don't do anything. But in immunosuppressed states, or when there is an environment that facilitates their growth, they start to give trouble. So we classified dermatophytoses based on their distribution. So their distribution determines the classification. And uh, think of that. They can affect anything. Head, and the body, and the uh, inguinal area, and the feet. So based on that we have tinea capitis affecting the head, tinea corporis affecting uh, uh, the body, tinea pedis affecting the foot, tinea cruris affecting the inguinal area. And there is uh, also tinea versicolor. Tinea versicolor, and uh, this is different from others. It affects uh, the deeper layers. And uh, so let us talk about uh, most important things. Whenever you see that there is a flat lesion, a scaly lesion, surrounded by raised borders, that's the classic description of ringworm. So look for those clue words. Tinea capitis, they say black dot appearance because tinea capitis affects those hair and the patient gets that uh, black dot appearance. And uh, sometimes the body reacts, the body over reacts and it uh, forms a mass and we call it a kirion. So a kirion is basically an exaggerated host response to tinea. So when, when the children especially get tinea infection, you see that black dots and kiria. Folks, these are the important words and those words itself are clues to the diagnosis because in the examination you don't see the patient. You see the clue words and go by the clue words. And the tinea corporis is when the tinea affects the body. And the most common fungi that uh, cause this are trichophyton rubrum and uh, microsporum caris and there is another organism called trichophyton antagrophytes. Those are the most common organisms that cause tinea carporis. And it is also the most common form of tinea. So, when you see this thing, Look for those clue words. It's a flat, scaly patch. A flat, scaly patch with a raised, palpable border. So those are the clue words for tinea. And they expand like this. As they expand, they leave an area of central clearing. So something starting as a flat, scaly patch with raised borders, 
moving with the central cleric. Folks, those are the most important points you need to remember. When you see the description, immediately think of uh, Tinea. Tinea Pedis is Adlit's foot. And Tinea Pedis basically is a very common condition. And it, it affects like 70% of adults. So a lot of people get this. And again, it is divided into three subtypes, tinea pedis. But the most prevalent form that uh, you see, when you see these patients, you will see their fingers and uh, you see that fissuring between those fingers. And when you see the fissuring, you see that maceration that is uh, most of the times is uh, tinea pedis. The second thing, mokase type. And then there is a wet and vesicular type. Body responds with vesicles. So in tinea you can see those vesicles. So those three types, the, uh, the first one and uh, with the fissures, the second one, mucosin type, with erythematous patches, and the third one is uh, uh, with the silvery scales and vesicles. So, tinea pedis, that's about tinea pedis. Then, tinea cruris, when, it, uh, when the inguinal area is affected, we call it tinea cruris. And it spades the genitals, and it is more common in men. So that's about uh, tinea cruris. So you see, there are different risk factors for each. And the tinea vesicular, as I said, it affects the deeper layers of the skin than the other types. And uh, so it goes quite below the epidermis. That's the characteristic feature of uh, tinea vesicular. And uh, when you see tinea versicolor, you will see multiple areas, and it's caused by uh, malassezia furfur. That's the fungus that causes tinea versicolor, malassezia furfur. And you will see a different hypopigmented macular lesions. And uh, these multiple macular lesions, over the trunk and the legs, and you need to think of tinea vesicola. And when the patients are exposed to sunlight, when they go out under the sun, and these things, they get uh, accentuated. You see them more under the sun because they respond to the light. And you will see that the fine scale. So that's about the different types. And how do you diagnose tinea? Basically, most of the times you don't even need to do a diagnostic study because the clinical features and the physical examination, they point to you to tinea diagnosis. But if you want to do 10% KOH under a microscope, you will see hyphae. And uh, there is a agar called Sabarot agar. And if you grow that uh, thing on Sabarot agar, you will see hyphae and conidia. So, KOH preparation, Sabarot's agar and wood slap. These are, uh, you hear these words only in Tania, right? KOH, you see hyphae, septed hyphae. Sabarot's agar, you will grow conidia and hyphae. And if you see under wood slap, you see the fluorescence. So those three things you need to remember in the diagnosis. Now treatment. Tinea capitis. I mean you can't use uh, creams and uh, ointments of the head. That doesn't work for tinea capitis. The treatment of choice is uh, griseofalvin. But other forms, mild forms, you can use uh, uh, creams like clotrimazole, meconazole. 
and these topical preparations themselves have majority of patients. And you need to tell patients that they should continue topical preparations like even for two weeks after the resolution of symptoms. They should not say, I got rid of this, I'm fine, I will stop. No. Continue after this. And if it does not respond to topical preparations, use uh, other preparations like by mouth, griseofalvin, fluconazole, and etraconazole. Those are the agents you take by mouth. Now, tinea pedis. Tinea pedis, you can successfully treat it. And if you use like four weeks, even over the counter preparations like meconazole, clotramazole, they clear up uh, tinea pedis. But if the patient has uh, any, I mean, nails, if sometimes nails are affected, then you need to use griseofalvin. Start with griseofalvin, folks. That is the cheapest medication. If it, the griseofalvin doesn't work, go for fluconazole, etraconazole, costly stuff. But you start with griseofalvin. And as I said, sometimes the nails are affected. That complicates the picture. I mean, it makes it a little bit resistant to the treatment. So you start with topical antifungal therapies and you use them for two to three weeks and patients get relief from the problem. And uh, encourage patients to keep the areas dry because anything wet, one moisture, it uh, increases the maceration and uh, makes the condition worse. And the problem recurs again and again. And antifungal powders, you put the powder and the uh, patient has to wear a loose-fitting uh, dress and uh, keep the area dry, that's the main thing. And sometimes when there is too much itching, you can also use a corticosteroid preparation. But you should use corticosteroids only like two or three days. That's very important. You should not use corticosteroids forever. Why? Because if you use more than three days, that corticosteroid, it brittles the skin and it actually makes the skin like a medium for the growth of uh, the fungi. So use corticosteroids only for two days, or maximum three days. And that's an important point. Don't write uh, corticosteroids forever. Now, what about the resistant cases? Resistant cases, they need uh, oral therapy and uh, tinea versicolor. It can be treated with uh, tropical selenium sulfide. So that is the important point when you hear tinea versicolor. Selenium sulfide or ketoconazole, you apply ketoconazole for three days. And uh, so selenium sulfide and ketoconazole. When the disease recurs, you can uh, prevent it with uh, one of, uh, uh, I mean, once monthly bedtime applications of selenium sulfide. So, tinea versicolor, selenium sulfide. So, that's an important point. Now, what about when the nails are affected? We have a name for it, tinea angua or onycholysis. When tinea affects the nails, you will see that the yellow discoloration. And many times that the first sign of fungal invasion of uh, nails. So you see that uh, yellow thickening of the distal nail plate. And think of a uh, tinea infection. And then the classic fungal appearance like scaliness, and then it gets a crumbly appearance of the entire nail surface. So you see an yellow appearance, then a crumbly appearance, and if you have a doubt, you can do KOH examination on fungal culture from what you obtain from the nails. 
And the other important thing is um, tinea affects only one or two nails, like one or two. If it affects the whole, all nails, then think of psoriasis or lichen planus. Okay, that's an important point, folks, in differential diagnosis. Tinea affects one or two nails. If every nail is involved, it's more likely psoriasis or lichen planus. So, if you see tinea in nail, then you need to treat that patient because that can have uh, other complications like uh, deformities in the nail and also creating an uh, environment for the growth of uh, other organisms. So when you see tinea infection affecting the nail, then you should start treating that. And what about tinea capitis? I said that the treatment of choice for tinea capitis is griseofulven. Because if you use uh, a, ta uh, sorry, a cream or an ointment, it does not work. The topical fungal antifungal agents, they do not enter hair. They do not enter nails. That's why when you see the nails affected or hair affected, go for a oral agent because topical preparations do not work. The other important point is uh, the griseofulven is absorbed from gastrointestinal tract more when you take it with a fatty meal. That's an important thing. So when you give griseofulven, you encourage patients to drink whole milk. If a child comes with tinea capitis and you have to give them a griseofulven, tell them to take it with ice cream. So it makes them, uh, it makes uh, taking it easy. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. What is that? I have Lisa Molinas here. Who? Lisa Molinas. Oh, okay. Okay, she has a sore throat still, her right jaw hurts, and it radiates up into her right ear. She has a sinus headache, some post... She, well, what she said is that she wakes up in the middle of the night with the stuff all gathered, like, right at the top of the back of her throat. So I'm going to take a guess. It's a, some sinus strain that she's got going on. Okay. Um, she's got a slight cough, some tinnitus. She said that if you think this is, if this is bacterial, she will consider an antibiotic because okay. this has been going on for over a month. Okay, thank you.